Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about Putnam 2007 number B5. It's a problem that I like because if you start with some small numbers, you get a sense of what's actually going on. Now I'm not going to introduce this problem right now, I'm going to introduce the actual problem in the video, but I do want to talk about one function that shows up in the video and is the source of the problem. That function is the floor function. So the floor of any real number is the greatest integer less than or equal to it. So for example, the floor of 5.3 is 5, and the floor of 6 is 6 itself. But the floor of 7.9 is 7. It's not the closest integer to 7.9, it's the integer just less than it. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into the problem. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to discuss this interesting problem, Putnam 2007, number B5. So this is late on the competition. Um, so it asks, let k be a positive integer, prove you can find polynomials, k of them, each of which might themselves depend on k, so they might have k involved in their expressions, such that when you take the floor of n over k and raise it to the k, you get it as a combination of powers of the floor of n over k from 0 up to k minus 1 multiplied by these polynomials evaluated at this n that we put in here. And this must be true for all integers n. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack here, um, but let's just get a flavor before we actually dive in. So what this is saying is you can, for any, you staple k to the floor and for any positive or any integer n, the floor of n over k raised to the power of k can be represented in this way where these polynomials have as input this number n that we started with. It has to be true for every single n, even though these polynomials don't change depending on n, they only depend on k explicitly. So lots going on. And like I typically like to do with Putnam problems, anytime you have these general numbers and coefficients or general things that don't depend on like prime divisibility of the year or anything like that, start with some small numbers and see what you can do. So what I want to do is look at this expression when k actually equals 3 and see if we can make sense of it to get an idea of what to do for general k. Alright, so when k is 3, our goal is to prove that the cube of the floor of n over 3 can be represented as an expression that looks like this. So what I want to do is investigate what the floor of n over 3 looks like for different values of n, and then see if we can use that to come up with an expression like this. So first, let's look at the floor of 6 over 3. That's actually an integer already, so this is actually 6 over 3. What about the floor of 7 over 3? This number is just slightly bigger than 2, so this number should be 2, which I can represent in terms of n. It makes sense to represent it in terms of n to try to get an expression like this because we have expressions in terms of n here with these polynomials. So I'll write this as 7 minus 1 over 3. Okay, and the floor of 8 over 3 is close, is also 2, the 6 over 3, which you can represent as 8 minus 2 over 3. Okay, now the floor of 9 over 3 is itself, and the floor of 10 over 3 is going to be 9 over 3, which is 10 minus 1 over 3. So we kind of see a pattern here, right? The floor of 11 over 3 is going to be 11 minus 2 over 3. So it seems like no matter what we do, the floor of n over 3 is going to be one of three possible values, either n over 3, n minus 1 over 3, or n minus 2 over 3. Okay, so if you write that on the side here, it looks like the floor of n over 3 is either n over 3, n minus 1 over 3, or n minus 2 over 3. How does that help us get a cubic equation that the floor of n over 3 satisfies? Well, knowing that the floor of n over 3 satisfies one of these three values, we get then that 
one of these three quantities, this, this, or this, has to be identically zero, no matter what n is. Again, because the floor of n is one of these three values. So if we actually multiplied all of these three, we'd get zero, no matter what n is. All right, but what happens if we expand an expression like this? We'll get the floor of n over three raised to the three with no coefficient beside it. And then we'll get a bunch of expressions that have coefficients involving n and or these numbers right here over here expressed in terms of the floor of n cubed, the floor of n, sorry, the floor of n squared, the floor of n, and then just the constant coefficient. And so this will look exactly like an expression like this. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, so how would this generalize for general k then? Well, it seems like we have an idea of what's gonna happen with general k. Say you have the floor of n over k using the same thing that happened with the floor of n over three, it seems like the floor of n over k is gonna take on one of k possible values. Either it's identically n over k, or it's n minus one over k, or it's n minus two over k, or et cetera. Okay, so if it happens to be true that the floor of n over k always takes on one of these values right over here, then using the same principle we did with the floor of n over 3, we'll get that the floor of n over k satisfies the expression that we wanted originally in the problem. So the thing that's left for us to consider is why, for any fixed k, the floor of n over k must take on one of these values over here. So let's state that as a lemma and try to prove it. Okay, so I've wrote this as a lemma for fixed k. The floor of n over k has to be in this set right over here. All right, so the question is why is this the case? Well, let's think about how we actually compute n over k. What we do is we take n, we divide it by k, get a quotient and a remainder. All right, so we can represent n as q times k plus r, and that remainder is something, because we're dividing by k, between 0 and k minus 1. So this number n over k is really qk plus, plus r over k, which is q plus r over k. All right. So we see that n over k is this integer plus this little number right over here that is between 0 and 1. So q actually is the floor of n over k. Right? And so q, when we rearrange this, is n over k minus r over k, which is n minus r over k. And so this floor of n over k is a number of this form where r is between 0 and k minus 1. And that's exactly what we have in this set right over here. So a cool problem, one of the things I like about it is if you start with a small number like k equals 3, you can play around and get a sense of what might be going on in order to get an intuition of how to continue after that. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.